Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. And all of you people in online that are traveling and out and about everywhere who are in your pajamas right now, we're hoping you're comfortable drinking some cocoa, having a great time, and we want to talk about this awesome, awesome gift that, uh, that God gave us. I do want to thank our choir. That was, uh, the, the song was written by Joel and Adriana wrote the song and uh, put it together. So thank you guys so much for, for doing that. <clears throat> Christmas. How wonderful to have Christmas on Sunday. You know, not very often do we get a Christmas service on Christmas Day, right? So we've got now Christmas on Christmas Day, Sunday, which is absolutely wonderful, where we can worship him who was born king, right? He was born king. He was born savior. I love the prophetic word. I love what we did there to realize that the aspect of what we can give him, our offering, our gift to him, is just to adore him. It's just to praise him. It's just to worship him. I love Christmas. I love Christmas time. I love giving gifts. I love receiving gifts. The whole idea is just so much fun. And I love the Christmas story. In Luke 2, 10 and 12, it says, Then the angel said to them, talking to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, because there's a bunch of them there, and it's kind of scary, an angel shows up. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. All of us were going to benefit from this. For there is born to you this day. Thank God he sent his son to us. Thank God he sent Jesus to us. Thank God that today we celebrate the Savior of the world who came to earth, destined to die to save us forever and ever. Man, what an amazing God. What an amazing day. Born to you this day, this day that we celebrate right now. In the city of David, which was Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Do you know every day I need a Savior? Every day it seems like now I'm talking to God about this. I can't tell you how many times I've gone, Ooh, oh, Lord, thank you, because I didn't look, and there was a car coming this way. I could have been hit. I can't tell you how many times in a day even I'm telling the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, this could have been much worse. I had a, a, a problem, and one of our pipes broke, and got a little water out there. But it could have been much, much worse than that. And then, and then all the stores are closed, right? It was, on, it was yesterday. All the stores are closed, and I happen to have the right piece that fit to solve the problem down in my garage. How did that work? And I just said, Lord, you are so good. You made me buy this 10 years ago because you knew I would need it today. He said, Phil, I'm going to bust a pipe, and you're going to need that. No, God is so good. We need to thank him for all of his goodness, for all the great things, how he looks out for us when we're not looking. He does so many good things. And then if something tough happens to you, remember this. Don't go, God, why'd you do this to me? He said, listen, I saved you from 3,000 others. I know you got this one. But I have been there looking out for you. And this will be... The sign. I love this. This is the sign. Jesus is born. What, what, what's the sign? What is it? You. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Okay. There's a lot of babies wrapped in swaddling clothes. That's not uncommon. What's, you know, okay, that's a sign. That's a good sign. We wrap the baby up. Lying in a manger. Okay, that's not common. A manger is a feeding trough for animals. We're going to find the baby in a feeding trough. That doesn't make sense. I think it gave the shepherds an idea. Hey, go to a barn someplace because that's where he's at. Go to a barn someplace because that's where he's at. Every day, I need a Savior. Every day, I need a Savior. Every day, I need a Savior because we need hope. I love what Bob says as the wise man. He says, Find the star, find the king. Find the king, find hope. And don't we all need hope in these dark days? Boy, and it seems like this year this rings even truer. It seems like dark days. Dark days. But then he says, but no matter the darkness, behold, he 
is the light of the world. It doesn't matter the darkness. Behold, he is the light of the world. And he came to us as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Cool. In a manger. What? Why would he come in a manger? Why? I mean, you'd think the Ritz Carlton, right? Or, 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 or maybe the Seasons or, or the Hyatt, some, some pit house suite someplace is where he would be, right? Why, why, that, 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 he's a king. He's a savior of the world. Why wouldn't he come and appear there? But there's no room at those nice places. There's no room at the great places. Didn't matter to him. Jesus says, I'm coming. I don't care where I come. As a matter of fact, I think he enjoyed being born in a stable a barn, a cave, whatever it may have been. I think he enjoyed being laid in a manger. You know why? Because he wanted to let us all know, I'm not royalty. I'm just common like you are. I've come for common men and common women. I want you to know I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to really have nothing. I know what it feels like to be laughed at. I know what it feels like to be poor. I know what it feels like when you go through problems and situations. You see, he said, I'm here for you and I know you because I know what it's like to live just like you, common man, not royalty. There's, There's nothing more perfect than a baby born. I just think about a baby and, you know, I remember our first one and looking, oh my gosh, counted all their fingers and toes and, 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 and everything was just so wonderful. It was so cool, so, so perfect, so complete, so beautiful, so wonderful. It's a miracle. Life is a miracle. Life is a gift that we have. Last week, Tom talked about the perfect gift, the perfect gift that Jesus gave himself to us, right? He's the perfect gift. But he also gave us a perfect gift. He gave us life. He gave us life because life is a gift and every day we should enjoy that gift. That's what I want to talk about today. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. When we passed out the, uh, the where do I have it here, somewhere? At the end of the drive through nativity, we passed out these calendars, 2023. Amazing how many people love them. The lady goes, oh, I have mine from last year on my fridge. They love the calendars. And this year, <clears throat> when I gave it out, I said, hey, we want to give you a calendar. This is to remind you that every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. To remember, every day is a gift. Do we know that? Even the tough days, the bad days, every day is a gift from God. By the way, we have these calendars. You can all pick them up as you leave here. We also have candy canes for all the children as you leave here, so pick up that. And the children are ages zero to 100. Life is a gift. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. I love this quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. That's why we call it the present. I just think on Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. On Christmas, we're celebrating his birth. But do you realize this, that God celebrates your birth? You're thinking about, oh, wait, that's just Christmas. we got to celebrate his birth. God celebrates your birth. In Psalm 139, I love this Psalm, 16, 13 through 16. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. I'm going to read that last verse in the NIV. It says this. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Before one of them came to be. 
there, there's another quote that says this. A life of pages waiting to be filled. That, that to me looks like there are a bunch of blank pages and we're waiting, waiting to be filled. I, I think the way God wants this said is this. A life of pages waiting to be fulfilled. A life of pages waiting to be fulfilled. You've got to realize he's already written so many things he has destined for you to do, to be, to enjoy. God has a destiny and purpose designed for you before you were ever born. We think about his birth, he's thinking about your birth. He planned it, he thought about it, he was involved in it, he was there, he was writing your history even then. Before you were ever born, your joy is to complete the adventure God has written for you. Your joy in life, that's why it's a gift. You get to fulfill the adventure that God has written for you. Your life is a gift from him. We get to enjoy the adventure. The adve Everybody say adventure. Life is an adventure. Life is an adventure. If you want to give God a good gift, if you want to give God a good gift, and what do you give the guy who literally has everything? All right? He literally has everything. If you want to give God a good gift, a great gift, a perfect gift, give him your life and then fulfill the call, the adventure that God has written for your life before you were ever born. Think about giving him a great gift. Just fulfill the pages. Just enjoy the adventure. Just enjoy life each and every day. Just add value to somebody else. Be here for a reason. Don't absorb everything, but give everything. Don't be a black hole. Be something else. Can't think of something. Does somebody have something good to fill in there? A what? A supernova! <laughs> Your life, it's a gift. God gave you a gift. Are you enjoying it? It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Every day is a gift from God. When you wake up in the morning, and you go, ah, that's a gift. That's a gift. That's a gift. Let me tell you what. The older you get, the more you appreciate the gift. When I was 20, I could care less about the gift. Right now, I get up and I go, I'm here. Hallelujah. Another day. I'm so excited to be alive. What can we do? What pipe will break that we can fix? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You're a gift. Your life is a gift. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The word steal is the word klepto. It means to filch. Filch means to steal secretly. I've talked about it before. The devil always steals secretly from you. You don't even know you're losing it. It's like you invested in a Ponzi scheme and all of a sudden at the very end you're going, what, what? I've, I've been investing for 20 years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry we put the guy in jail. Just want you to know he's in jail. But I don't have nothing. I know, but he's in jail. He steals from you. Kill. Thuo is the Greek word means to slaughter. He came to slaughter you. That's his intent. He wants to slaughter you. The word destroy means to destroy fully, to destroy fully, completely. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have, may have, may have, and that more. That's what he came for. You see, the devil comes to end your life to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to bring us life. And not just life, not just hum ho every day. He came to give you life abundantly, abundantly, overflowing. That's what he came for. 
I love this word life. The Greek word zoe. Say that. Zoe. Not zoe. Zoe. <laughs> Phonetically it goes D-Z-O. Zoe. It's just fun to do that. I feel like I know a different language. Zoe. Yo. And you know what Zoe means? Life. That's what it means. But it's, notice this, the God kind of life. It's the life only Jesus can give you. It's amazing what this, this word is. Because Zoe is different than bios, another Greek word, bios. And it, it's a Greek word that, that represent, that, that, that representing physical life, that you're alive as a being. Or suke, or suka, some pronounce it. Suka or suke, which also talks about a life, but this life is a life that re- originates in the flesh. It's more of a fleshly or worldly, if you will, kind of life. Zoe is this God kind of life. It's interesting because in Matthew 16 it says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Then it says, for whoever desires to save his suke, his worldly life, this this worldly life, will lose it. But whoever loses his suke or suka will find it. And what is the it that we'll find? He's implying you'll find Zoe. He's saying, lose this worldly life. Don't worry about this one. It's that God-like life, that Zoe life, that eternal life that he gives us that we want to make sure we hold on to and never relinquish. Uh, You can kill me, but you're not going to take Jesus from me. The word abundantly, I like this. He came to give us zoe. Say zoe. Zoe. Yes. He came to give it to us abundantly. For a sauce. It means super abundant in quality or superior in quantity. Super abundant in quantity or superior in quality. He came to give us that kind of life. This is right out of the, 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 the Strong's. He came to give his life, Zoe, abundantly, which means super abundant in quantity or superior in quality. That's what he came as a baby to give you, a superior life, an abundant life. The word also means excessive, just excess. He just lavishes life on you, spiritual life. He just lavishes spiritual life on us. That's his gift to us. Life. Spiritual life. Abundantly. The devil wants to end it. He wants to end your suke. But God wants to give you zoe. Zoe. Abundantly. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. Don't let the enemy rob you with worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, unbelief. Don't let him rob you with comfort and complacency. All of those rob us of the zoe that God came to give us because we're worried about the sukkah, the suke. He came to show us a different life. Speaking of the Christmas story, I, I love what the angel came and said to Mary. This is in Luke 1, 35. He comes and tells her about what this gift he's going to give her. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. What I want you to notice on this, it said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary and started a great adventure in her life. 
It started with a trip to Bethlehem, right? I mean, there's an adventure going everywhere. You see, the Holy Spirit starts an adventure in your life. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. He did, right? Acts chapter 2. We're talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. It, it, it came upon, he's saying the same thing that happened to Mary, the same thing. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. It will come upon you. You see, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are intended to aid you in your adventure with God. You want an adventure with God? Walk in the gifts of the Spirit. You'll have an adventure. You'll have an adventure. He will make your life an adventure. It will not be boring. If you're feeling bored, you're there going, you know, life is just, huh, huh, huh. Okay, let me tell you what to do. Just ask the Lord for a word of knowledge for the new person you're talking to. That'll get your blood going. <laughs> you get you shaking. He'll get you. And then and then share it with that person. And then see what happens. See, see what goes on there. You see, God will take your boredom and he'll make it an adventure. The problem is that sometimes we like boring lives. Ooh. Sometimes eight to five, just come home, ba da da, do the same, da 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 da. We like boring lives. Boring lives are safe. Boring lives are predictable. Boring lives are boring. God gave you life, Zoe. Zoe life that responds to these gifts of the Holy Spirit. You see, your life is a Holy Spirit inspired life. And it responds to the Holy Spirit. It's your gift. It's your gift that he's given you. He's given it to you. Maybe you need faith. Maybe it's wisdom. I don't know. Something. How do I fix the pipe, Lord? Give me some wisdom. I don't know. I'm just saying, are we walking with the Holy Spirit? Are we enjoying the gift, the Zoe life that he gave us as Christians? Are we enjoying that life? Asking the Holy Spirit to move upon us, receiving his gifts every single day? The gifts of the Holy Spirit? I love it. If you're chatting and the word Advent, you know what the word Advent means? The arrival of a notable person. Who is that notable person? Jesus, right? We call it the Advent. Some people have Advent calendars, right? The arrival of a notable person. And I say, this notable person, when this notable person arrives, he takes the advent and makes it an advent chore. Ah, <laughs> that advent that happened was to make your life an adventure. That we would enjoy it. It wouldn't be boring. It wouldn't be ho hum. It wouldn't be, oh, I've got that. I've got seven of those. I, I got a salad spreader shooter. I got a, this a butter shot. I got whatever the latest gift is. I got it. 70 of them up. No. They're new every morning. Something new. Oh my gosh, I never saw that before. There's a good gift. That's the Holy Spirit giving you another gift. Hey, a word of knowledge. Hey, a prophetic word. Hey, a miracle. Wisdom. The adventure comes with an array of spiritual gifts. Gifts perfectly chosen and given to you. Perfectly chosen and given to you. Are you walking in them? Have you opened them? It's interesting thinking about gifts. Have you opened them? They look pretty on the outside. I'm a Christian. See, by the wrapping paper, I'm a Christian. I have a clean life, pretty life. God doesn't just care about the outside. He wants us to get on the inside. He's not after just your pretty life. He wants to give you gifts. Not to just stick under the tree to be there for year on end. Usually, by this time, you've opened up the gifts. Those of you online, you're still opening them up. You're in your pajamas, for crying out loud. I hope you're enjoying your pajamas. That's great. No, don't change for me. No, it's good. I love them. I love them. We're opening up presents. 
We're opening presents. Are we opening up his presence that he's given to us? You know, it's interesting to me. Have you ever bought the perfect gift you thought for someone? You spent all the time, energy, effort, like Pastor Tom was talking about, and you get the right gift, and you get it, and you wrap it, you wrap it up, and then you give it to the person. Now, tell me, how are you feeling here? You're going, hey, open it whenever. Just open it up, just for you. No, no, you're going, hey, open it, open it now. Open it up. Open it. I want to see your face when you see the perfect gift in your hands. I just want to see your face. So there you are. Aren't you excited? You buy something nice for your wife and you can hardly wait to give it. You, you give it to her. You don't just say, hey, uh, I'm going to go to work, uh, open that up, I'll come home, we'll talk about it. No, you want to watch her open it up. So there you are, waiting for the gift to be opened. Waiting for the gift to be opened. And you're so excited. You know, Christian is, <laughs> Christian loves, uh, he, he, on, on Christmas, he, he loves gifts. He'll give me a gift. And he, he wants me to open it before it's even Christmas. I mean, he just, because he's there, he wants me to open it up. He's so excited about opening it up. He can hardly wait. This is, he explains the gift before I even open it up. And then he actually helps me pour the wrapping paper off of it because he's so excited about the gift that he got for me. All right? All right. So excited. So excited. This year, I opened it up. He got me one of those putting things to put in my office with a putter. Because that's, that's what I'm going to do all day. Because he said, you know, Trent says your, go, your putting stinks and you need this. That's what he said. I'm giving you a practical gift. Please use it. Don't embarrass me out there on the golf course anymore. But he's so excited. Can you imagine him giving me that gift? Oh, and he's, oh, Dad, let's open up. And go. You know, honestly, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. He goes, I know, no, I know I shouldn't have, but I did, I did, I did, I did. No, no, no. You shouldn't have. I don't want it. Can you imagine what that would do to somebody? Can you imagine your wife telling you, I don't want this gift? You don't even know what it is. I don't want it. Can you imagine how hurt you would feel? Hey, almost a little angry. I, 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 I spent all this time researching it. Can you imagine the Holy Spirit? Can you imagine God when he's given us all these gifts of the Spirit? Open them up, open them up. No, no, I don't want a word of knowledge now because if I, uh, it'll, it'll make me nervous. I don't know, but I, I, I got gifts for you. No, I don't want to open up. Can you imagine how we must make God feel sometimes when we refuse and say you shouldn't have given me this gift? I don't want it. Take this from me. I'm just saying when we get lazy in it or we just don't want it because now it's an inopportune time, he gives you something and you're going, ah, I don't want to do that right now because it'll take time. I'm saying he's given you a gift because you're the Zoe life and he wants your life to matter and he wants your life to change somebody else's. Will you open up the gifts? Will you ask for more? Lord, give me more gifts. Give me more gifts. Will you open them up? Our world today needs hope. And the only way it's going to get hope is because it needs Jesus. And the only way it's going to get Jesus is because you delivered the package. You delivered the package. Deliver the package. Deliver the package. Open it up. I got a, I got a, this happened at our, at our, uh, uh, upstairs office party. I put a $50 gift uh, card inside of a box, wrap it up. You can see it, go ahead and start it. I put mittens, you have to put these little mittens on and whoever gets the, whoever opens it up and gets it is the one who receives it. Then they're rolling dice. If you roll doubles, it has to shift. It shifts whenever there's a doubles rolled. <clears throat> There's Cassie. She's gonna. She's ripping it. She's got it. She's ripping it. Up. Up. Oh. 
Oh, geez, Catherine just got bypassed. Here's how you open a gift. That's Ellis. Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another box. Oh, darn. Rip it. Just sheer force. Sheer force. The gifts God gives you do you open them up like you want them? Ellis wanted that, man. <laughs> he beat the snot out of it to get it open. Will you beat the snot out of God in order for him to give you gifts? No, I'm not trying to say you should do that. But I'm saying, do we look at them as some careless thing? Or are we just ripping them open because we want it? It's what I want. Open up the present like you want it. Don't treat God like some bad white elephant gift giver. <laughs> if life is boring, open a gift. Every day we need to open the gift of life he's given us and open the gifts of the Spirit. Let me conclude with this thought. God's gift to you is life, Zoe, life. What you do with that Zoe, life, is your gift to God. Give him the best gift this Christmas. Give him all of you and watch what he'll do as he gives you all of him. Merry Christmas, everyone. Don't forget to open up all your gifts. Love you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.